So we have Mark Gardner uh, presenting today, who is the owner of Meyer Skidmore Hardwood Floor. He is the second representative of Meyer Skidmore that has been in the group. Uh, the original owner, uh, at least from our group, uh, Mike Strand, uh, was here, and then he left, and then his stepfather took over, and now he's doing the group. Bart has been a member of the group since December 2014, so we're. Uh, a bit over a year now, and we're looking forward to Bart's presentation. So take it away, Bart. Thank you. I'm Bart with Myers Skidmore Hardwood Floors. Um, pretty self explanatory what we do. We install, fan, finish, and repair hardwood floors. Um, kind of winging it a little bit. My office manager put this together with some bottom stuff off Barbie while I was goofing off in Moab. On the upside, I'm not doing this off the question or anything, so it's a good trip. She did a good job. Um, I've been around in the older area for 30 years, me and my son have owned it for 10. I've been involved in school time for three years, and kind of in the background for the last 10. Um, when you do hardwood floors, there's kind of whole list of stuff that you've got to sort out. It's kind of like when the designer goes through your house. Um, they have floors that are pre-finished before you ever put them in your house. You just put them in and they're done. And they have site finished floors where we go in and install them, sand them, finish them to your specifications. And then there's also the new water base finishes where the VOCs are real low and the odor's real low. There's still a little bit of odor to them, but they're a lot safer, better for your family, and the quality of the finishes has got real high. Um, then there's the old oil base finishes which have been around forever. They're still a good finish, but they have some. Um, odor and stuff to them. And in this particular brand, Glitzer makes what was the Boulder standby. Everybody calls it Glitzer, but it's a conversion bar. It's an alcohol based acid to your finish. And it's a really tough finish, but it's highly toxic. On the upside, you don't have any bugs for about a week. It kills anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> it's going away, but it's not gone. So, <laughs> better than that, Boulder. Um, there's some pros and cons on what you do, and some of it's from a designer and visual standpoint, and some of it's from uh, practicality and wearability. Um, the side finish floors, if it's a redo, we come in and sand them and put the finish on them. If it's all new, then we have to install them and do it. So you have a long lasting finish, you have a little better selection of the wood types, it's a more natural looking floor, or can be. Um, you can stain them when you collar, and then the sheens, there's a little more variety on the sheens. But, um, we tarp up the house, and we have dust control on, excuse me, so the house is not a big mess when we leave. But one of the um, downsides of it is it's a, pretty much a full blown construction project, so that part of the house is pretty much shut off. So, depending on whether it's a complete install or redo, how much time you have. Size of it's anywhere from three days on up. Some of the houses take a while because they're pretty big. Um, the pre finished hardwood floors, a boat is not a big pre finished market, but they're gaining traction in some parts of the country. That's all they do. They have a groove in most of them around it or a bevel, and that's one downside, in my opinion. Visually, some people really like them, so that's something that's individual basis on them, and they come what they call hand scrape. Most of it's done by a machine unless it's one of the more expensive brands of floor and then some of them are done by hand. You have a wider choice of collar, but they're like a car. They're in stock for a few years and then they rotate as they manufacture them. So one of the downsides is you need to keep some of it on hand in case it gets damaged. Um, we say there's less wood choices, but there's a lot more finished colors. It is like a manufacturing plant. They do all kinds of crazy stuff. And in the last two years, they've really got a wide variety of the finishes. European oils, and they're doing two-tone finishes on them. But they're hard to fix, where if you screw up the floor, that we sand and finish more often than not, we can finish it or repair it. So the upside of them is, Put them in and you can walk on them as we're putting them in. A lot less dust in the minute we're done with them. Um, 
Some are refundable, some of them are not. In Colorado's climate, one of the things we have is we're super dry here, and some of the woods come with a warranty with 30 to 50 percent uh, humidity maintenance for uh, the warranty on them. They go to your house, and you don't have a humidifier, they don't even check the floor, they're just gone. So if you put in a pre finished floor, there's some things that people need to be aware of. So we spend a little time coaching people on that so we don't have the wrong product in the house or they understand what they're doing. So it seems like it's simple, but it's just some kind of troubles. Some kinds of troubles down the road that people don't you know, spend some time. Um, you can have soup to nuts, just about anything you want in them. That's the end grain of steep floor. It's just blocks and it's the end of the wood. It almost had a leather type look to it when you see it in real life. It's in an old 80 year old house in downtown Denver. Um, they make um, not too much done on site as far as manufacturing things, even in your town, but you can buy just about anything you want. And they cut it with a laser or a computer controlled machine there, and they're, they're installed with the floor and finish. So there's a ton of options for uh, decorating the floor. And you notice there's different patterns in there, so there's some different things you can do. I just want to say that's my job, the Centeno's house. Centeno's. And that house is, uh, that, that parquet is 100 years old. And Meyer Skidmore came in and patched in where we took out a wall, and it looked like it was done at the same time. And that was the most beautiful job. Say a little prayer for you to do those, because sometimes they can cross the park. Um, this is um, just a normal uh, floor. It's hickory and uh, that one. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it's hickory. Um, so there's several different types of wood and stuff, and kind of just visually on what you want to do. There's a couple woods that are soft and they're good for low impact homes. I call them like grandma and grandpa and no kid live. But hickory's hard, so it's a good family choice for it. So there's some decisions on that. This is a white oak, and these can be stained a million and one different colors, so it's a good, good floor. The cherry floors and the walnut floors. Are stunningly beautiful, they're not practical. Or at least they're not practical at my house. I call it the kids, dogs, grandkids, toys on the floor and stuff, and they bar up real easy. So they don't look too good too long if you're a high use household. Um, probably 70% of the world has a red oak in their homes. If you have an old home that was from the 40s, that Jim might know when FHA changed the rules. You had to have a floor that lasted the life of the house. So they put old floors in, then the law changed, and they went to all carpet, no floors. So if you have an old house that has wood floors in it, some of them are covered up with carpet. But the refinish job there is good or better than what you can do now there. Like day one, when you uncover them, clean them up, and refinish them. So some of the older homes you know, pull back the floors, and then the floor was never popped up with carpet on it. What years do you think those were? So when they changed the FHA law, they used to have that memory. It was the late 40s? Late 40s. Late 40s. And the, the neat thing about that stuff, if you pull back the carpet and you find oak, that red oak will not have a knot in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is a little harder to find nowadays. It's real hard to find. Real Some clear. of it's real long. You have to get special meals sometimes if you want to replicate it. You can scratch it and stuff. But it's probably better quality than what you can buy today. So you Back or and back. it's completely dry. Yeah, <laughs> it's got all all the out of it that it's going to do for the most part. Still does expand and contract. Um, that's a walnut. We do those once in a while, but they need to be a um, hold in slow impact. This guy happens to be a psychologist up in the mountainside. Um, and you can see the whole front branch of this house. That floor is. Probably the most beautiful floor I've ever seen. The pictures don't even do it justice. Um, that's a maple floor. It's a real light colored floor. And that's it. I think um, on ours, just to kind of walk the people through the, the processes and stuff on the floors, when we go in, it's always cost is an issue. Um, it's pretty much a lifetime product with some maintenance on it, you know, and you can refinish it. 
Um, Colorado, humidity is a huge deal in your home. So if you have a wood floor or cabinets and you see the edges around them or cracks and stuff on it, a humidifier, if you can get your home in a 30, 35 degree range, is better for the home itself. Also get a plus for your sinuses and skin. And if you got kids and stuff, it helps with cold and stuff and keeps the dust down. We're just so dry here that that's kind of a mountain states are an issue with the dry weather, which we are high desert. Is there any questions? You said 30 percent? 30, 30, 35 is ideal. In terms of the uh, finishes that you put on the floors, which is the most durable of the three that you talked about? This is the most durable, but the commercial grade water bases are just about caught up to. The uh, market used to be 90 percent grits in Boulder, so I can tell people they're not too touchy. It's 200 cents for me to stock the place. <laughs> So it's pretty rough finish. You're out of the house for four days. The first two days, your gas mask doesn't have to be put in. Um, it shows scratches less, and it's, it's not rubbery, but it doesn't scratch like a regular finish scratch. It's harder to see what scratches they are. But, you know, is, is, is it just coating, or is it penetrate? The glitzer penetrates a little bit more than the other two finishes. Has a tendency to soak in, and you'll see more of the boards and stuff, and it doesn't have a bill that's more. Um, so, just a little bit different type of finish. It's a real durable finish, brings a lot of the color up, really beautiful. <coughs> but it's got a ton of downsides on it, and it's already illegal on both coasts. It's illegal here. You have dogs, high use areas, and stuff that you can finish and put on your floor. But the water bases. Rapidly catching up. So, Bart, do most people purchase a semi gloss or a flat or what? Satin and semi gloss. Um, there's a European look, it's getting popular with a few people, so they'll put a matte finish down or oil wax finish, which is something that's relatively new in the U.S. And it's a real doll finish, and you have to go through and buff them. It used to be wax floors, you had to buff them. They're real rare, except in areas of people, um, you know, Chicago, New York. Have people can afford to have somebody maintain and wax and kind of old houses. They're not real practical things. What's typical cost variation between hardwood and the pre-laminate or the pre-finished? You know, you talked about some of the negatives of pre-finished versus re-staining. My guess is the only reason people would use pre-finished just to save on time or money. The time saver. It's a little bit cheaper. But the cost differences are less, the more expensive pre finish you put down. They can go from three to twenty bucks a foot for the wood itself. So in the ballpark the red oak floors in about the ten dollar range, pre finishes are in the eight to nine if you stay in a normal product. If your stairs have carpeting, do you veneer over the stairs or you have to replace the you run? Replace them with a solid tread and a solid riser. Okay, you have to replace them. Can we get a budget like wood, please? You can. You can uh, the price goes up, but you can go from two, three, four, five, and then the price starts going up. But we just redid a 21 inch wide floor and put it around. 21 inch. We could do one more, Barbie. What's the lifespan of a pre finish versus a, a hard, solid hardwood? So it's kind of a loaded question. I tell people, Grandma's house 20 years, my house six months. <laughs> so we're hard on stuff. We don't. Isn't a depressed floor pretty groovy these days? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you say? Do you, do you like bamboo? What? How, how do you like? Yeah, I don't like it, but we do it. Is it too hard? It's not sustainable. It's too soft, right? No, they say nothing will last. That's a price <coughs> quality driven deal. 